Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August the 13th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I have to be as blunt as possible here. I know there's talk right now with people like Carl Froch, for example, that this might be Tyson Fury's last fight, right? Understand, the gambling public believes he loses the rematch to Usyk. Right now, you're getting crazy odds on Fury. Crazy. Uh, if you're going to take Usyk, you have to pay something like a minus 170 right now. So people are wondering, gee, if Tyson Fury loses the rematch, is he the kind of guy who would continue on in the sport? Right? If Usyk proves the first fight was not a fluke, can Tyson Fury handle being in the sport without being considered one of the best ever or unbeaten? Right? Now, let me just say, my personality and life's really a single player game, right? You know yourself, at least you think you do, um, and you can't quite figure out how others think. Well, my personality is such that if I was in a dangerous sport like boxing and I won the heavyweight championship, I would only stick around one or two fights. You know, I would leave money on the table. Boxing for me would just be a way to get rich, uh, get my name out in the public light so I can get VIP treatment and future jobs in the sport, right? Not in the ring, maybe as an announcer, maybe as a podcast person, maybe as a YouTuber. Right. But I, you know, I'm not interested in sticking around a sport long. It's a personality thing. So let me just talk about some guys who share that. Guys who got out early. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. You know, it's hard to imagine a more ferocious fighter. It just simply is. Hagler left the sport at 32. Understand that Hagler Ray Leonard fight is controversial. You have a huge part of the public who believe Hagler won that fight. There was talk about a rematch. They couldn't work out the numbers. So then Marvin went to Italy and Marvin became an actor. Right? You know, Hagler was probably one of the least likely people back then to walk away from the sport. Hagler never gets back in the ring after that Ray Leonard fight. And understand, he entered that fight as the middleweight champion. Let me name two other names. We all have a short list of the most dominant athletic performances we've seen. On my list is now Caitlyn Jenner's record-setting decathlon goal-winning performance in the 76 Olympics, right? I was a kid. I didn't quite understand what was going on. It seemed, you know, over my head. Uh, I, I didn't quite get the idea that it was for one gold medal and you were doing a bunch of events and stuff like that. But what I understood was that Caitlyn Jenner, who's now, who was called Bruce Jenner at the time, was beating the field. Right? He, he was dominant. So, just to understand, the second day, it's a foregone conclusion by the time they get to the last event that Bruce Jenner had won the gold medal. That's how far ahead he was. Right? He set the record. This is a record-setting performance in the decathlon. He never competed again. Right? In other words, he sets the record, he wins the goal, folks, that's it for him.
I completely understand the mindset. Here's his quote from back then. He says, in 1972, I made the decision that I would go four years and totally dedicate myself to what I was doing. And then I would move on after it was over with. I went into that competition knowing that it would be the last time I would ever do this. Folks, it was the last time. Let me name another athlete. He was co-MVP of the NFL. He's arguably the best football player who ever lived, right? Look, I know we all love different athletes. Jim Brown, when you think about rushing titles, I believe there's one year where Jim Brown does not win the rushing title, right? Understand, Cleveland wins the NFL championship, it would be several years before a guy named LeBron James brought another championship to Cleveland, right? Jim Brown was the top. Jim Brown was the gold standard. People understood Jim Brown was the best to ever play running back. 5.2 yards a carry, by the way, in terms of yards per carry. And everyone in the stadium knew he was getting the ball. Jim Brown was making a movie. Art Modell said, hey, you've got to report to camp or we're going to find you. Jim Brown then decided, you know what? I'm Jim Brown. I want to be an actor. I don't need to play another game of football. And he didn't. Right now, I understand those people. I don't understand. And I'm serious when I say this, just from this seat. Someone like Michael Jordan where you see him, his last play as a bull was to hit the winning shot in an NBA Finals, right? You see him, you say, wow, you can't do better than this. He walks away from the sport. You thought, wow, Jordan, everyone knows him. He's on the Mount Rushmore of NBA players, even the greats like him. Right? People like Jerry West at the time were calling him Babe Ruth. Right? And then Jordan somehow had a need to come back. I didn't understand it. Right? Ray Leonard beats Marvin Hagler. You thought, wow, what a way to end a career. And then Ray stayed in the game. Right? Had some difficult fights. You know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I looked at Kareem, I thought, wow, this guy's on top. Then he lingered at the party too long. Right? The Lakers were a Magic's team, well before Marie, uh, Kareem pulled a plug. So that brings us to Tyson Fury. Right? He was unbeaten until a very close fight, very close fight, against Usyk. Right? There's a stretch of rounds in that fight, I know many have forgotten, where Tyson Fury takes over the fight. Right, For Tyson Fury to lose, I thought he'd have to get knocked down once he made it out of the early rounds. As I said in an earlier video, the plane had left the airport. He was on his way to victory. And of course he did get knocked down. He was badly hurt. It was not a flash knockdown. Usyk, who's behind, comes all the way back. Right? I thought the decision was one I can live with. Right? Two great fighters. Usyk showed you he had the better stamina. I thought the referee, in fact, might have cost Usyk a complete stoppage in the round where Fury goes down. Right? The ref is kind of between the two guys. Um, not the best ref placement, etc. Right? But let's just put it this way. This is an athlete, and it's a personality thing. This is an athlete who's not a Caitlyn Jenner. Right? This is not a Marvin Hagler. Right? Both of them... Hardcore on discipline. Hardcore. 
got the most out of what they could do. By contrast, and let's be blunt here, and I'm going to disagree with Carl Froch, the Hall of Famer, right? By contrast, Tyson Fury at the top of the game, at the top of his powers, I have no doubt that he was going to win that Vladimir Klitschko rematch. But he had weight problems, didn't he? Right? This is the guy who loved the buffet. He had substance abuse problems, didn't he? This is the guy who had mental health problems. This is the guy who showed up at a press conference wearing a Batman outfit. We forget this. And he seemed a little bit too excited. Right? Even fans like me were looking at him and saying, wow, is this guy all there? Right? Then he was out of the sport. Understand, he himself in interviews has said boxing is the most addictive drug. It certainly is. When it gives you discipline, when it gives you a culture, a camaraderie, where you can show up at the gym and you're friends with Martin Bacoli, Joseph Parker, you're the center of an ecosystem. Right? You've sparred with these guys. You have an identity. You're the heavyweight champ and it matters to you. Right? Understand, for Caitlyn Jenner, right? The former Bruce Jenner. Being great in the decathlon, literally being the record setter in the decathlon was just a means to an end. It was just a way to get to Southern California, ultimately, and to hang out with interesting folks and, you know, end up on reality TV shows and things like that. Right? It was just a way to get famous. For Tyson Fury, in my opinion, it's an identity. Let me just say this, too. I know chronologically, you look at him and you say, wow, he's older. Right? He'd certainly be older, perhaps too old, and lightweight, right? You just saw Terrence Crawford, who's also on the other side of 35, give up the 147-pound belt, right? But let me say this. At heavyweight, it's different, right? You have guys older than him at heavyweight, like Zhili Zhang, who are highly competitive, who are still threats to the throne. Right, if Fury goes out, and I believe Fury's the betting side of the play for the rematch, just food for thought, just looking at the risk and looking at the odds you're getting. But if Fury goes out and let's say he loses to Usyk, but he doesn't get severely injured, right? There's no brain injury or anything like that. Uh, wow. Don't you think a fight against Zhili Zhang would generate box office? You know, Zhang is extremely dangerous, but Usyk, we forget, is actually ambidextrous. And Usyk has better legs than Zhili Zhang. Take Martin Bacoli. Usyk has sparred with Martin Bacoli. At one point, Bacoli's trainer famously said, there's only one person we think can beat Martin Bacoli. And that might, might be Tyson Fury. Right? Just to understand, Fury is going to be tempted because people he knows who he sparred with and people his generation are still active in the sport. Right? Joseph Parker is part of the Fury ecosystem. Joseph Parker beat Jili Zhang. Joseph Parker beat Deontay Wilder, right? Understand, you know, a guy like Joseph Parker is probably going to be friends with Tyson Fury for several years. You're telling me that a guy like Tyson Fury who loves boxing a lot, who's from a boxing 
family, right? He's not the only person who is heavily involved in the sport, in his family. You're telling me a guy like that who, if he's going to hang around his friends, he's going to be around a boxing gym. He's going to be around boxing people, right? He knows he's not the man about town. He knows he's not the guy who can handle going in a bar, having a few drinks, leaving the bar, still being able to, you know, keep it together. He's not a guy who can walk into a crowded room and not demand attention. Right? You saw him for a heavyweight fight. This is the guy who wanted to be carried in the ring, sitting on a throne, wearing a crown. Right? Let's just say there's a lot of Ryan Garcia, who you and I know is going to continue his career, even without knowing we know, looking at the guy. Look at Tyson Fury, a guy who wants to be carried in the ring, wearing a crown for a title fight, is going to be a guy who is going to have a hard time leaving the sport. Right, so let's just get the personalities right. You know, just like Jordan, simply couldn't stay away from basketball. Simply couldn't. Right? That's the same thing with Tyson Fury. That's the same thing with the guy he was on the phone with after that guy's recent victory over Joe Joyce. That guy was Derek Chisora. Right? Tyson Fury was talking to another member of the Fury ecosystem. Another guy who, let's face it, is going to have to be dragged away from boxing. He's not going to leave voluntarily, at least not for another couple fights. And that's 40-year-old Derek Chisora. Right? That's who Fury is. I don't think Fury quits. I think this is kind of like a Ray Leonard situation, where the guy pretends to quit, then suddenly he's in the ring with Marvin Hagler. Then the guy pretends to quit. Suddenly he's in the ring with other guys. And they're tough fights. Right? Dolly Lalonde was the light heavyweight champion. He's the guy Ray Leonard wanted to fight. Right? Ray fought Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Right? That first fight is a classic. So, of course, Leonard had to fight his toughest opponent. person he thought was his toughest opponent. And let's face it, Ray gets knocked down two times in that fight. They called it a draw. In other words, Ray Leonard at the end was fighting tough guys. Another guy he fought, Terrible Terry Norris, Hall of Famer now. <laughs> you know, young gun then, Hall of Famer now. Right? I, I get the feeling Tyson Fury is just not Caitlyn Jenner. Right? He'll be on the sofa, he'll see a guy on TV, he'll think to himself, I can beat that bum. And of course, young guys are going to be throwing around Fury's name. Right? Young guys want credibility. They're going to see a Tyson Fury and they're going to think, wow, he belongs in a senior citizen home. I want his name on my resume. If Usyk could beat him, I could beat him. You know the way young guys think. They always think they're the best ever. Right? So, consider me to be among the doubters. Right? Jim Brown, as he put in his book, he said, I have an attitude. I don't think it's bad. <laughs> One of the best books I've read in my life, by the way. He said, I don't think it's bad. Right? Understand, Jim Brown knew who he was. He was Jim Brown. This is different than Jerry Rice, another great player who, you know, was never going to leave football until Mike Shanahan told him he hadn't made the team. This is late in Jerry's career. Right? I mean, some guys have to be told no. Other guys on top will say, great, this is the end of this chapter of my life. I think I've proven myself. Understand, we're here in 2024 and I'm talking about Bruce Jenner, 
setting the decathlon record in 1976, right? Let me just say too, I personally don't understand someone like a Kevin Durant or a LeBron James, right? Staying on the U.S. Olympic basketball team all these years with all that pressure, right? I don't get it, I'm sure, the first time, hey, it's fun and stuff like that. Uh, I don't understand the second time, but I could see someone saying, you know what, the first time I was so nervous, let me come back and do this again four years from now. You get to the third Olympics, and I'm wondering what's going on. Right? I'm, I'm wondering what is there to prove. I understand in the comment section of this YouTube video, people are going to start talking about Joe Lewis, right? A 12-year run as heavyweight champion. They're going to talk about how winners stay in the game until they have nothing left. Right? I understand that point of view exists out there because we're seeing it right now, in my opinion, and we'll continue to see it, with Tyson Fury. I think like his good buddy Derek Chisora, he's going to linger in the sport, right? I think a lot of the talk about this might be it for me and stuff like that is a negotiating ploy where he's trying to say, look, man, you know, I have a price tag and it's going up. You're going to have to make future events worth my while, right? With a nod and a wink to people like Anthony Joshua, who I have no doubt Tyson Fury wants to fight, uh, as well as others. Anyway, those are my thoughts. That's how I see it. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right? Boxing is dangerous, folks. Let me tell you, a lot of the fighters I grew up with, the guys who you thought would be boxing analysts, right? Some of them are no longer in public because of injuries they suffered in the sport. Right? Brain injury is a serious thing. You can be a great fighter and still have problems. According to rumor, Floyd Patterson, who actually was, I believe, the chairman of the New York State Boxing Commission, was asked a few basic questions toward the end. And it took a while for the people around the former heavyweight champion to realize that Patterson could not even remember some of the fights he had, right? That's the way brain injury works. Now, given that risk, given that Joe Lewis himself became paranoid at the end, right? Had things like aluminum foil on his windows, right? Just to understand the boxers are aware of the risks. You know, um, some boxers were good friends with boxers who've gotten hurt and they know the risk. Manny Pacquiao was famously on a card where a guy got killed on the card. Not in Pacquiao's fight, but in some other fight. Right? Boxers are acutely aware of the risk. I'm astonished, especially since Tyson Fury has been getting knocked down in fights. Right? Deontay Wilder knocks him down multiple times in multiple fights. He hits the canvas against Usyk. Right? He's a dad with a lot of kids. Right? You would think he might say, hey, let me walk away from the sport. I love the sport, but Father Time ultimately is the only unbeaten champion. Uh, Father Time and Floyd Mayweather. Um, you know, let me walk away right now. Didn't mean to diss Joe Calzaghe. Didn't mean to diss Rocky Marciano. But um, let's just say I expect the road Tyson Fury is actually going to take is going to lead him to fights against an Anthony Joshua, a Gili Zhang, maybe a Martin Bacoli, maybe a Daniel Dubois. We'll see how it unfolds. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.